Let me talk about this incredibly shocking story uh, from earlier in the week. The numbers that have revealed that over 900 Gauteng girls aged between 10 and 14 gave birth between April 2020 and March 2021. Well, let's now speak to uh, Fina Kodisang, CEO of uh, Seoul City Institute. Fina, good day to you. And yesterday when I saw the story in the newspapers, apart from the numbers uh, being horrifically bad and the uh, failed leadership, which I'm sure you and I will discuss in a moment, can we just get to the point of the biggest problem here? 10 to 14-year-old girls are not of consenting age. This is statutory rape. Yeah. It is statutory rape, and we are not calling it what it is. We keep problematizing girls. The, the minute we say 10 to 14-year-old girls gave birth, we are not elevating the problem. We are problematizing the wrong people. So we should start reporting it as that. We should have said 934 cases of statutory rape has taken place in Gauteng. Then we, we, we magnify the problem. We put emphasis where it should be put. I couldn't agree with you more. So how do we now start trying to, A, uh, find out who is impregnating these young girls because they're committing a crime, obviously. They're destroying lives. And it's the lives I'd like to go to next. Uh, 10 to 14-year-olds are not emotionally capable of looking after a baby. What happens in a case like this? What would the Seoul City Institute do to assist these uh, incredibly underage mothers? So we need to understand that these things happened during lockdown. That period, April to March 2021, was a period when we were on lockdown. So for us, it's, it's not even a matter of could it be, but we know for a fact that these young people have been violated, they've been raped. It, uh, it, it shows that there is domestic violence that is happening that we are not paying attention to. Mm. So we need to start, as you say, by getting to the root cause. Who is impregnating these kids? We need to understand and profile these people and prosecute them correctly and understand that the emotional trauma and the physical trauma that these young people are facing requires a multi-sectoral response. Social development must get involved. You know, um, health must get involved. Police must get involved. So we need a soul city to make sure that all these three departments are held to account for these uh, crimes that have happened. But for the victims, we need to also make sure these young people understand that it is not their fault. Mm. We cannot blame them. They need to be given counseling. They need to be supported. It's unfortunate that it's after the fact. You know, and in our country right now, prevention programs are not given the funding that they need. So you are asking what a soul city we would do. We do have programs that we run, but we, we, we cannot reach every young person because the funding that is required is diverted to other activities and prevention is left I guess, to people to see how they do it themselves. Mm. Can we talk a little bit, uh, Fina, about the reporting of cases like this? It is still Women's Month, and a, a, an ongoing issue has been for years and years and years is this uh, second victimization when reporting uh, some kind of sexual assault crime, whether it's rape, uh, etc. I can't imagine for the family or even a little 10 to 14-year-old girl who's having to now give birth is going to be willing to come forward uh, to report uh, being pregnant and that she was uh, raped. And I suppose this is where the second victimization, the second trauma uh, is going to come in, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm sure even the numbers we are seeing are not, you know, the correct stats because some would have gone and had extra abortions, you know, or some, you know, are not even coming through the system. So reporting is a big problem, but also the problem is how these matters are handled in the family, in the society. If, if the father, the uncle, or someone close to the family is the one who perpetrated this violence, you will definitely know that this case will not reach the right authorities. But also the authorities that are the people who receive these children. So in a clinic, when this girl presents, 
You know, where is that report? Why is it not going through the right channels? If it is going through the right channels, who is failing in the system mm. to make sure that then something is done? We see cases and we see statutory rape prosecuted. I don't remember or recall a case where someone was on trial and they, they, they were on trial for statutory rape. So it shows that we don't take it serious. We don't, you know, even put accountability measures in place. So you are right in saying reporting becomes a big problem, first in the family, because sometimes these girls will not be believed when they say I was violated, I was raped. They will be called names. I saw even on social media where people were saying some of these girls are falling pregnant for the grant. Who would put their future in jeopardy for 400 rents? Let's just let's talk, be honest. Let, let's talk, if we could, just before I say goodbye, the last minutes or so I have with you, Fina, uh, about uh, the, the leadership uh, in all of these various sectors. Who do you think uh, should be picking up the baton on this and protecting these young girls? Who would you, as Seoul City, the CEO, who would you like to speak to in government uh, or in a ministry of some kind and tell them they need to do the following. What would you tell them and who would you be speaking to? I would talk to the president and tell him we see the efforts. You know, we have an NSP on gender-based violence and the first pillar speaks of leadership and accountability. But I would want him to hold ministers in the different ministries accountable when their ministry have failed to fulfill their mandate. So Department of Women, must be held to account. Department of Social Development must be held to account. Um, education and health, everybody who's in the chain where a child is concerned should be uh, held to account for the failure of the system to make sure these girls are protected. It's a pleasure speaking to you. I wish it was under better circumstances, but raising such good points. Fina, uh, always a pleasure, and I really hope that anybody who uh, might be uh, in the know about these young girls who are pregnant get hold of uh, the Soul City Institute. I'm sure you can find them online. Fina Kodisang, my thanks to you this morning uh, in joining us, uh, the CEO uh, of that organization.